Hello and welcome. My name is Luke Lightbringer, and this is the show where we try to let our light shine. And, and today's episode, we're going to talk specifically about the concept of spiritual healing. Um, we're likely going to have at least one guest on, um, kind of in a talk show format. I do have some notes and stuff regarding the topic of spiritual healing, um, both what that means to me. I think it can mean many different things to many different people. Um, and we'll get into the definition of that here briefly, but a lot of times when I try to start these things, I started with a brief, a brief prayer or meditation or, or something like that. Recently, I've been really loving the Baha'i prayers that I've come across. And so I'm going to read a short one of those to start off here. Oh God, my God, aid thou thy trusted servants to having loving and tender hearts. Help them spread amongst all the nations of earth the light of guidance that cometh from the company on high. Verily, thou art the strong, the powerful, the mighty, the all-subduing, the ever-giving. Verily, thou art the generous, the gentle, the tender, and the most bountiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm drinking some cardamom tea. Mm. I think some people also call it Persian tea. It's quite nice. Um, so like I said, we're going to be discussing the topic of spiritual healing, uh, both in just kind of a lot of ideas about it, but also in some practical techniques. You know, I have um, some of my notes here divided up and there's kind of three categories of mindset, worldview and then techniques and mechanisms so not necessarily in that order uh, my friend cedar's also going to be coming on here as like a voice multi-guest um which let's see let's i told her i'm going to be here so let's tell her to come on in all right so we're going to be doing the multi-guest and we might have other people on um, but i did share with her just right before it was actually funny i said hey i want to talk about the concept of spiritual healing on, on the live later if you're interested and come to find out she was there she is now she was already writing about spiritual healing so i thought it'd be just it's just very kismet like serendipitous and and i find those of us that are kind of on this path um whatever you want to call that path, the path of the light, those of us trying to shine, um, serendipity follows us around. <laughs> it really does. And you start to get used to it. Like serendipity and, and kismet things happening start to be like an old friend that you, you expect to see. Um, you know, with that in mind, um, speaking of friends, there we go. Why don't you come on in Cedar and we can get to talking. Hmm. Welcome everybody to the show. That was a beautiful show. intro. You nailed it. Hey. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> a lot of times I don't even do the intro, but I thought that if this being a more focused convert, like a conversation centered around a topic, it makes more sense to to kind of keep to to bookend it to to, to shape it in that way. Um, <laughs> Crazy you say bookend it because I was literally just preparing to say when you were finished talking. Um, like an author wouldn't always put a preface in every mm. one of their books but like when it's necessary it's really useful <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um so what i thought first we could do i mean i the spirit the topic of spiritual healing is uh means different things to different people so i went ahead and tried to define what i mean by it and i'll tell the people that and then you tell people what you think it means so okay i defined it quickly as an internal spiritual alchemy or transmutation leading to increased well-being that can often involve exterior actions but the the transmutation takes place within so what would you think is your as a definition for the term spiritual healing oh um i was gonna go get my notebook but mm. i We'll just do it off the, top, off the top of my head. I think that you are correct. I would probably be inclined to add on to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Go um, for it. Uh, I think that like um, the transmutation, it is obviously integrated within, but it's like a per it's like a combination of it happening within and without. Like um, people expect these like quantum leaps across mm. like tons and tons of you know radio stations 
when really it's like you follow the energy a bit it follows you a bit you follow it it follows you and that happens in all directions so like outwardly and within and um in that process you can like gain momentum if you're lucky and like your soul's contract and your soul like kind of lets you um you'll become more lucky you'll have more of your physical needs met um which will yeah lead to increased well-being within and without literally to a cellular level mm. yeah I, I think i think the path that people have to take like along whatever kind of healing journey in this way they're taking is going to be like super unique and so i want to preface like the whole conversation to like the things that might work for me might not work for someone else but maybe they will so like there's there's a there's a there's a worth of listening to it um but i was also going to say uh, bring into it that th there is also this like other connotation to the term spiritual healing in terms of like things people do to other people you know like energetic people trying to heal other people and stuff and it's interesting like you talk about like the increase like in luck and stuff like that um I feel like even before my spiritual awakening, I had this just like feeling of like a general feeling of being kind of blessed in a weird way. Um, not necessarily like in like a literal way, like, you know, like bad things and stuff still happen. But like in the background, I just had this kind of feeling. Right. And I wonder if that has something to do with what I eventually experienced in my spiritual awakening. Um, and another yeah. thing I wonder at attached to that before you respond is that what if like like s another person like energetically like from somewhere like unseen to me like enabled my spiritual awakening these are just like some <laughs> of my wonderings you know um because it was so quick and sudden and like i had my part in it but it was so like not what i was looking for <laughs> um so i just have these wonderings like i do well you definitely had help like um like as i was saying the other day with the, the gateway stuff like you have to ask for help from beings higher than yourself you were like you could use the analogy like how you had that feeling of premonition before the change actually started to take place you could think of it like it had been a long winter and you felt the air start to be less chilly and warm up before the sun came out and then obviously there's like changes in weather from there but it's not winter anymore like you're not f frozen to the bone and that makes the change a lot easier to take place and also for you to want it to take place and that sends out its own energy signature which means that all of your spiritual protection is like ah oh, yes we're needed we have access we can help yay <laughs> Right. There was a big aspect, I think, of it, of like my acceptance. Like we talked about like like that consent aspect yesterday of it, of like giving myself over to the process, to the trans transmutation, I guess. Um, Absolutely. I think that's really important. The other thing that I was thinking, um, uh, based on something you said where like people want this like quantum leap and like changing radio station kind of experience is it, it's so much like like being a gardener. I think where, it, you know, the, the level of like patience and like patient care that goes into being a gardener and like you have to make sure the soil is proper and add fertilizer and then your seed and your water and there's a lot of like, you're not like just reaching your hand into the ground and pulling out a fully finished crop, right? And I think yeah. a lot of people are looking for that and when they don't find that they get discouraged, That but they don't realize the, the patience that needs to go into it. Um, and I say that as somebody who it honestly happened pretty quick to, um, but I wasn't trying to have it be that way. Yeah, you were like detached from it, but willing. Mm -hmm. um, and the the thing about the garden, um, I think the like equal and opposite to that is people are actually more comfortable in the shame cycle mm -hmm. of like trying to do that and failing and they like the feeling of failing it's comfortable to them they have something to get mad about and they can tell that they're self that then that they're trying and that they're being righteous in that when um they're staying stuck in shame and the shame is just taken on a different form so it can survive 
Yeah, people do seek out reasons to to dislike or even hate themselves or think of themselves as failures. Like negative, they they. It seems like people like subconsciously seek out reasons to soak up negativity. Like people, by and large, in general, in society. Um, and that's an interesting, it's an incident, interesting phenomenon amongst people, I think. And I think it leads right into um, one of the other things I wanted to ask. Um, from what types of things do people need to heal from? What thoughts do you have on that? Um, the, that's another thing that's very, uh, jewel in nature. Um, I think that, uh, uh, that I mean, like, calm, I guess, from things I've done in their own lifetime and then things from past lifetimes that have meant that their soul can only move so so far forward in this lifetime. Um, so that comes from the self and then the equal and opposite of that I would say is fear, shame, um, yeah, like that isn't their own, that's instilled from other people's like crap around them. Um, like, uh, so like, for example, I can say there's energy present in my field right now that isn't mine and I don't want it there because it's making me feel bad. Discernment, like a lot of uh, people aren't taught discernment, energetic discernment. And so ego. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Which Flatline was giving you um, some love in the chat I too, Cedar. For. I forgot. I just have literally a fan. forgot the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, yeah. And that's complicated. Um, the, 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 the application of ego to it is true, but complicated to the question. Fear um, and ego need each other to survive. Yeah. Like, I, like, so like, it's like the ego is involved in the sickness, but like, in some ways, the ego is also the thing that's sick, that's causing the pain, that's causing the thing that needs healed, right? Like, a misconception of the ego and that's something i have notes about as well about um people identify with just being their ego i think that's one of the first things people need to get past and and to like really start a, a spiritual healing journey is that detachment from sense of self being the ego and and think of the ego more as a tool as a part of your body just like your hands are your tools your faculties your abilities you have the ability to have ego thought mind as a tool not as an identity not as a, as your whole existence um i think that a lot of people's dissatisfaction hurt unhappiness comes from that misconception of self would you agree with that because yeah, totally. It's because people aren't taught discernment, and discernment is in this stage of the uh, schoolness. <laughs> yeah. um, you can only really learn discernment through suffering. Um, and even if someone were to come along and try to explain it to you, the the like low vibration of the world and the way that people don't know how to match that, like uh, means that even if you receive information that might have saved you you will not understand it or even remember mm -hmm. it because your your hardware your, your software whatever totally rejects it it's just like nope that doesn't fit yeah uh, you're just um, your comprehension level isn't there um I, I think they're they're different things but i think they're related when you say discernment that something that comes to me is mindfulness too i think they're both they're they're, they're different enough to be distinct distinctly important but like related in, in terms totally. of like nobody is really taught mindfulness and like examination of self, which if you think about the term consciousness, which is really what people should think of themselves as, um, at least from their like project or perspective, like, like their experience from the moment they first open their eyes, they, they've experienced this consciousness um, is is this like self looking at is like a way people describe the concept of consciousness like self-awareness being a, a part of it almost um and i feel like that should be expanded out to like a lifestyle like you should embody what you are trying to be if you're trying to be conscious you know and and that involves that self looking at like examination investigation 
like inwards. Like I, there's a beautiful meme that I, that's like where it's the eyeballs slowly turn backwards and they're looking at the brain. Um, and I feel like so little people do that. And I think that, that doing that is such an avenue to spiritual healing that I, I think it's a necessity that mindfulness and, and, and discernment as well alongside of that. It is a necessity and it would be nice if everyone like knew that, but uh, the shoulds can only apply after a certain like base level of like soul development, I think, which um, the vast majority of people just are not able to um, oh, I need my asthma puff away. Do you want to like take over? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, God, breathe. So that I connected to the concept of mindfulness. Another one of my notes is, do people always realize how they're hurting? Like, I think there's a lot of things that like might be people's chief complaints. Like when you go to, to the hospital, you have a set of chief complaints. But throughout your, your process of healing, you might discover that, what is going on with the background music? I don't know. There we go. Made me think though with my asthma puffer. I didn't know I had asthma till less than six months ago. I thought that everyone breathed like that, which I think is a good <laughs> example. Um, <laughs> they tell me I have it too, but I don't typically find myself needing it, like the inhaler. Um, but anyways, I really needed it then. I don't know what. <laughs> um, Sorry. Well, that's a good okay. example of people not realizing how they are hurting. I guess you're not realizing you had <laughs> asthma. Um, but the question is, do people always realize how they are hurting? And they have like their chief complaints, the things that they, they think may be hurting them. But I would about guarantee you for most people, there are things under the surface, sometimes many, many levels beneath the surface of, of pain and hurt that need to be go through that a lot of people aren't even aware of. And oftentimes these, these problems that are their chief complaint, the, the mechanism, the way to resolve those is actually much deeper beneath the surface. By resolving things deeper, you're resolving things stacked on top of it, kind of, that might present more mm -hmm. outwardly. Um, but So what do you think about the question, do people always realize how they are hurting? Um, if you're I good with your it... inhaler now. If not, I can keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that the TikTok band thing that uh, this person has just said, ties into it perfectly because the reason they don't want TikTok is because people are t speaking about their individual experiences and finding community um, and learning to heal from that, which doesn't sustain the fear and patriarchy based systems that all of the millionaires are making money off of. Um, like you can't, if like, it's like a, if a color, blind person never knew that color blindness was a thing and they just thought they were seeing the same thing as everyone else like the same way that really sensitive people who see souls uh just go through life getting hurt over and over again because they can't fathom that they have different eyes in their head to everyone else because they've never been told and they're isolated which is by design that's that's a, a beautiful statement there are different eyes in your head than everybody else um, that's how I felt my whole life and, and that isolation and, and, and stuff like that. Um, that, that's an example maybe of stuff that like people are at most casually aware of that's causing them a lot of deep pain and until they, they go and look, they have to, to really look beneath the surface with this stuff. Um, and I mean, look what we're doing right now on, on TikTok as an example of what you're talking about, right? Um, bringing people together and having these kind of meaningful conversations that we're not having anywhere else right now um, no. in terms of that. Um, and then the, the next question I had was, do people know who they are? And no, <laughs> no, no is the answer. Um, in general, yes, I would agree. They don't. <laughs> they don't. Um, <laughs> very few people seem to. Um, and so another question, though, is what actually makes, well, this says you happy, but people happy, you know, like, is it the things they think they want that actually would make them happy? Because it seems to me 
Like there's a lot of wishes people have that if granted would not in fact actually make them happy. And they're like lust after those wishes that ironically wouldn't actually make them happy makes them so much more unhappy in the present. Right. Um, I have an answer for that. Yeah, too. go, go, go. <laughs> go for it. Um, do you want to go first? Or no, I was setting it up. Oh, cool. Yeah, you um, tell us. I'm going to change the music. <laughs> yeah, you tell us. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the question? <laughs> what actually makes people happy? And do people actually oh, yeah. know what um, would make them happy? Um, that is another thing that is like has a lot of duality to it. Um, you your soul knows what's best for you in any given moment. Um, there's a degree of entropy before somebody like has surrendered to uh, their soul and love and what they know their purpose to be, which is a rare thing. Um, so somebody's perceived free will and what they want is what is being forced through and the mind is a very powerful thing and so when the mind is being fed that like a message over and over again and it likes repetition it likes the feelings that are familiar um and then those chemicals get stored in the body which get fed to the mind and the mind feeds it to the body and you get stuck in a cycle like that and your soul wants you to survive more than anything so it will do it will balance that as best as it can to do what it needs to do to help you survive um but you can't have access to any of that external help unless you're in a life-threatening situation and you have a, a fate to fulfill that's important to the program. Um, you don't have access to that help until you pass a certain level of that's, that's surrender. Making me think about people having near-death experiences and like the idea of something helping and then like they have a near-death experience and then like that, they're on a better path. You know, they have that experience. Yeah. Like as if, as if something helped them suddenly being better is like that's like the outcome of help you know yeah um that's really interesting um, and then people and hitting their rock bottom before they yeah. start to get better um it's like and um, that's like your soul coming in with a pin and pushing the little reset button tighten the tiny little hole and then you like go all the way down to the bottom but you uh caught and lifted up again and with all new perspective because you can't have that like, people can't have those feelings that they want and deserve like love and safety without and like even if they had those things they wouldn't be able to appreciate them without that like context yeah um <laughs> that's beautiful like the, <laughs> the up and down you know um, another, another whole like aspect of this that I wanted to talk about, kind of going back to mm -hmm. what types of things do people need to heal from? I want to, 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 to explore the idea of like self-worth and like the judgments people cast on themselves of their worthiness, their value, self-hate. Like, it seems like these are things that are founded in misconceptions um, in a lot of different ways, but these are the source of a lot of people's pain and hate and like lack of full realization in life, so to speak. Um, what do you think about that? I think that again ties into the thing of like when you've never seen anyone around you be any other way, when you haven't seen like th there are people who might be examples, but they're not demonstrators. And I think there's an important difference between those two things. Like, um, you can be an example of like, oh yeah, I'm rags to riches. But if you don't effectively demonstrate that, I don't think it means anything. And demonstrating it is a hard thing to do, but um, yeah. like actually demonstrating like, this is how it works um, with like uh, making space for other perspectives while also gently and uh effectively efficiently precisely like uh pushing in a good direction like doing both so that to start to give the 
like uh, your purpose is kind of like a whirlpool like you'll be thrash you will kind of float around the outside for a while then you'll be drawn in a bit more and then as you go down further you thrash around and thrash around and thrash around and it gets faster and faster and scarier and scarier but then eventually you line up sh straight and when you get into the exact right position it's like a and you just go whoosh, straight through to where you're meant to be it, um but when you're not aware that's in the happening pool. it scares the shit out of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you kind of figure out like a way to go with the motion of the ocean so to speak um <laughs> throughout that process but there's a lot of like like you said thrashing around in the whirlpool i think um but i also you know i was also thinking like in terms of like you know you're kind of talking about examples around people but also like you know like you know so many people like their sense of self and their sense of self-worth are things that they have taken on as given from others to them you know like you know some people How may have mean? had well like, like for, qualities traits no no maybe also that's a different conversation but in terms of like you know imagine like a hypothetical person growing up and they spend their whole life with their parents telling them they weren't any good or showing them that they weren't any good, even worse, you know, like through actions, like giving that impression and maybe also saying that, right? And then they grow up to think that they're not any good because they took that on from some this 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 falsehood from another, right? Their whole life. And, and that's mm -hmm. leading to a lot of their pain and hurt now. They, they, their, their mindset and worldview is that they are not deserving of love or, or whatever, right? Because they, they were given that by somebody who was, who was supposed to give them something far better, right? I think that that's really common as far as why people have self-worth issues and that kind of pain. And, and I think spiritual healing is, is the, addresses that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Um... I was just thinking about like my own experience of that like um i had really even though i had been through horrific stuff even before the age of five like i still had really good self-esteem then like um i remember if somebody would like call me beautiful i'd be like i know um <laughs> somebody would call me smart i'd be like i know <laughs> i hope um, that's still the case nah, i'm getting there um it got beat out of me like i um i didn't see any different i was extremely isolated but every every glimpse or glimmer of a feeling i could get that was different i chased after and i was looking for the knowledge that i have now that whole time um and if somebody had been able to come and say those things to me i even if i hadn't understood them at the time um as things happened i would have remembered those words and been better able to deal with whatever happened um but when you don't have awareness of how you work um uh, yeah exactly um when you don't have awareness of like how the your body works energetically you can't defend yourself you can't protect yourself you can't have discipline um in any of those things and so when you are in the same place for so long and you don't have awareness of anything else and like it's hard to conceive anything else mm. yeah the, the light hurts your eyes when you've been in the dark for so long like that cliche like <laughs> i don't think i've ever heard it applied that way i think that's beautiful um <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it really does. And it, it reminds me, I was, I, you know, I do this interfaith group every Saturday and somebody was talking about how back when they were in kind of their, you know, their deeper, darker place in life that they were in, that they would see people who were truly happy or blissful or, 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 or even bubbly. And like, it would like stir up this, like almost like hate and vitriol towards them. Maybe like some kind of jealousy, she said. Um, but like, this like ineffectiveness sometimes of like of just being like like i guess like seeing happy people to unhappy people like that communication that can happen there just from like the different natures um it reminds me when i was 13 um i was like my most existentially depressed i've ever been uh like i really truly hated myself 
and my dad's partner at the time do you know the song by rem shiny happy people <laughs> i probably have heard it i've i couldn't place it in my head and <laughs> i don't want to play it right song. now it's like but it's a banger it's like <laughs> shiny happy people laughing <laughs> and at that age it made me so angry and now mm. i love it <laughs> mm. that's deep um, that's said that's said that that speaks to exactly probably what we're talking about you know and yeah um and they say like misery loves company right and i think that in terms of like people who are interested in in the world finding spiritual healing like i like we are i think it's important to look at like these means and measures of like communication and stuff and like where people may actually be at in relation to us um just in terms of looking at it to try to understand like what's the best way to offer like anything to to people who are in that place if you even can besides kindness or whatever um I think it's important to look at these things, like especially when we have experience from our past selves to to apply to going forward and how we act with each other, right? Um, that's why I think that's one reason I've always been so interested in why people do the things they do, think the things they think, so on and so forth. The sociology we were talking about earlier. Yeah, um, Flatline said it. I was gonna say something along the yeah. same lines. Um, holding space for them as much as we have the ability to and showing like actually demonstrating like making them feel it that different frequencies are available and even if they don't understand the journey that they're about to embark on knowing that they can feel different is like revolutionary yeah um and just that somebody being, will well, let me read, space for them lovingly. Let me read that out loud so, because people can't see it uh, everywhere. Just being present is all we can do and just give encouragement. Yeah, you know, that's what I, I like to think of as like fertilizer for the soil. Sometimes you can plant a seed. Sometimes all you can do is offer fertilizer, you know, um, something that might be useful later. I think you referenced that earlier. Um, but so I want to talk about some techniques and mechanisms that I've learned through my spiritual process that are like the practical side of things for like helping people in the day to day. Um, Heck yeah. So one thing I learned and, and I'll, I'll tell people the source of the experience that led to this and then I'll tell you the practical app or the, the practice anybody can do. So I was having one of my mystical vision transcendental meditation kind of times as I had, had been doing. And mm -hmm. I was guided to, um, to this place, like an outer space, basically, like very far out from anything. You could like see like a galaxy and stuff, right? And I was a little bit freaked out because it became apparent that I couldn't breathe because I was in space. Um, and then I looked to Sophia, the Holy Spirit, my guide, whoever you want to say, the, 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 the teacher in this lesson, I guess. Um, and, and said, help me, I can't breathe. And then as if she's speaking to a child, it's, it's like, yes, you can, you can breathe spiritually, you know? Um, and then with, with that acknowledgement, I was able to, and then I had this download of this like really powerful breathing and like cognition fixing technique that I'm about to describe to the people here, which it's helpful if you can imagine all of your thoughts as like strings and lines right and there's mm -hmm. distorted thoughts that might take the form of like negative self-talk things that don't serve you like identify mindfully like your anxiety at the moment or whatever you you want to you don't think is is helping you you want to get it out um it it, it should be like a, a distorted line a tangled up line so you picture that you visualize that and you grab a hold of it and then you're going to completely exhale everything in your lungs like to the degree where it's like uncomfortable and gross feeling like when you're like just like completely out of air but you're still getting that last little bit and you're kind of like it's not like holding your breath so long that like you're gonna have any like medical issues necessarily but like just so it's like you're getting to that uncomfortable level kind of like being in space where you can't breathe whenever you feel mm -hmm. like you need to, to inhale 
then you do that thing quickly so you're breathing out slowly and like you're pushing out like energetically that thing you're trying to get rid of that you that distorted thought whatever you're pushing out every last little bit of it and then when you're ready once you have the space made you are sucking in quickly just the best thing ever whatever however you want to visualize that whether it be god or any kind of energy or, or whatever something in to fill that void left by the thing you're removing and if nothing else if you do this breathing technique you will you will calm down from whatever level you're at doing this once will bring you to a calmer place once you're done um and sometimes you might That's find totally you, right. you need to do it multiple times to like really clear something out if it's like a really big thing um but like this and i you know people can do this and and i've described this to people and it makes sense to them they tried it and like it just was downloaded to me as a thing to do um and, and that's one of those techniques that i got like through like more of a mystical spiritual journey but i don't see any issue with sharing that with people for people to attempt on their own path right um, i've I'm, gotten that too yeah <laughs> that same thing I have, yeah mm. genuinely i have an addition to it though yeah i was gonna important. ask you anything that you've gotten in any sort of way but has like a practical practice is is interesting to this question the only thing i can think of right now that there are other things but in the breathing that you're talking about um people have a tendency to avoid being uncomfortable and they like, just want the feeling expelled but in order to actually transmute it you have to take it on first um <laughs> um so like the thing you said like um but kind of opposite so like sitting up properly squaring your shoulders and breathing in so that every like inch of your lungs are filled with oxygen and then letting it like go through your whole body so you can feel that like and then um there's like a specific noise you gotta make i can only do, I, all i can do is do it and you'll know how to do it when you hear me do it okay um, i'll just <laughs> go for it you kind of make like a you scrunch your face up and a bit like um <laughs> It's weird doing it in front of someone else. Well, we can't much. see your face if that's helpful. <laughs> uh, whatever you're the comfortable face with. Is important because it's like it's like a muscular. Maybe like, I'll hear it. Maybe it. I'll hear Easter. with the face in the sound. <sighs> and you completely <sighs> like yeah, that. Yeah, you yawned listening to me do it. <laughs> the thing, the name I got for it is an energetic yawn. That's what I call it. Um, <laughs> And in doing that, like you exhale everything like you were saying and you hold that for a sec and then you think of like the color or whatever, the feeling that you do want to have and you smile and it's literally easy to smile. You feel the whole smile and it's like, it's like sipping the best air ever, or, like the most delicious airy drink ever and you just like... <sighs> and then let your whole body relax. I want to point out to people just how very useful these things could really be if you really think about like the course of your day and the things you people go through to be able to find these like centering things is so powerful and I, I don't think people realize how valuable these things that are freely offered to them are that they they haven't picked up yet you know what I mean like these spiritual yeah. tools and, and practices and, and methods and stuff Enough. I forget what's in my toolbox all Me the time because you can only see what's yeah. at the top. <laughs> yeah. um, but I usually find the right tool for the job when I need it at this point. Yeah, totally. You know? um, I feel way better for doing that even once. I wasn't aware that I needed to do it and yeah. I feel way better now. <laughs> yeah. And you felt it too. Like yeah, I felt some, well. some things happening. Um, which that, <laughs> speaking of things happening, there's a thing that, that, that I often find that is useful to kind of trigger in myself and thank and you that for gift by the way jen sorry to interrupt yes thank you um but um to trigger in myself is is the power of gratitude and this is totally, yeah. another thing that amazes me about like the human condition the modern human condition is how people don't even have in general people don't have a concept of 
true gratitude. They have a, a concept of thank you. And they're not necessarily the same thing. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, it's logical and not emotional. Yeah, it's not like it's not an obligate. Like thank you is an obligation, right? Gratitude is a gift, kind of. I guess is a way to think about it. Like gratitude is natural and like it's it's a thing you want to do, whereas thank you is an obligation, right? Thank you is polite. Mm, yeah, and it's nice, it's nice, whereas not gratitude kind. Gratitude is kind yes. and honest. And um, earnest, I would yeah. say, is the right word. And like mindfully seeking out, and I guess like forcing yourself to to find things to be grateful for, even if that is like in like self things, not physical things, especially if it's self things, if it's circumstance things or whatever. Like, but regardless of it, like the mindful practice of gratitude, just like fills me with the tinglies and the and the bliss in a way that I can't even like it doesn't you can't like tell somebody about if you have it's a if you know you know situation but like it's the best feeling emotion like going up against joy or whatever which some people might think of it's the it by far and above gratitude and it can be towards other people you can feel this way it could be to the universe to god to, to whatever but like it's a it's like a it's like a, a cheat code on emotion. It's like a hidden emotion. It's like the DLC or something that you gotta get. <laughs> or the expansion pack, it seems like. Because most people don't look for that, and so they very rarely find it. But it, it is a tool, and there's always so much to be grateful for. Um, no matter what your circumstance, there are things we could find for you to be grateful for to, to unlock that, and it lets you feel good. It's a beautiful tool. If even if you're using it to get through your your day, right? Have you experienced that with gratitude? That feeling I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, totally. I've I've um, consistently practiced gratitude um, f from a very young age, and um, I was able to feel it in different ways as I like grew up. Um, now I would say that my gratitude is largely based on uh what is permanent which is myself um i had really bad self-esteem up to pretty recently so it's like it was i was doing my best <laughs> but now i'm grateful for like the life force in my body the fact that it's still there despite everything i've been through um the things that my body allows me to experience like the joy of like like sensory joy and comfort and contentment that and like closeness with other people that I wouldn't be able to experience if I didn't have a physical form um, yeah. that I get to uh, Look, we are in, we are in great alignment right now with that I think um, I'm thinking the same thing like in terms of like a kind of a, a statement of gratitude like this to be in this form right now exactly as this is to, to be Luke right to, to be right ex to be present right exactly where i am is a thing that i'm grateful for like deeply like grateful to exist and that's that's not something people are necessarily going to be able to start with if they're just starting to play with gratitude right i think that that's a result of a lot of the spiritual healing right so it sounds like you're saying you're grateful to exist in this way that you do in the present right is and that, in the world, yeah. like how I was talking last All night it. about like infinity yeah. and like how yeah. seeing those glimmers was what started me being able to actually yeah. feel the feeling of gratitude. Um, before that, it was like when I was able to be immersed in a different world where I could feel happiness, I would be grateful for that. I would be grateful that yeah. I could swim for in the all ocean of it, or right? Or like whatever. everything but those are all impermanent things as it and as i kept moving forwards um i it became focused on like the experience that i'm having and the my duty i guess um like to me that like all of the songs that i used to listen to about love and think about my ex-boyfriend or whatever um I, I don't think about that anymore because when i hear love songs i think of my love and like servitude to love i guess 
Um, yeah, I, I, that, me too, with the love songs. I was just thinking about that yesterday or the day before. Um, how many songs that are definitely not written with that in mind apply yeah. that way to me? <laughs> yeah, uh, that is a powerful tool for gratitude, I find. Yeah. I think that's a clue to the power of love that like it can come out. It can be manifest in that way, even without that person realizing it, you know? Yeah. Um, no, Touching all of that on one person is like, I don't really get it. I love people, but like, I could never, I couldn't even, even the people I love most in the world, I yeah. couldn't they're impermanent still and part of my right. practice of love is that i have to detach yeah. and that is as painful and angering as it is uh pleasant and beautiful mm. like <laughs> yeah i you know it's there's a level of it where it's like like things at the mask level and like two mask interacting you know what i mean um where that yeah. is impermanence and so like like you you become detached from your mask but you still wear it so to speak and yeah. and there's like i don't want to like lose that there's so much beauty also in the transient things the material things like totally. in the present like that's one of the reasons why we're here is it, the beauty of that transient that movement that all things in this place at uh, the dance. are yeah yeah, the dance, the song, the tapestry, the the infinite painting, you know, like moving. One the person movement. keeps doing like, I don't know, the scuba Steve over and over and over again. You're going to get bored watching that. But <laughs> if they're doing like a dance that like evolves and has crescendos and silence and all the rest yeah. of it, that takes you through all of the emotions, that's yeah. way more beautiful to watch, even though you might like really enjoy watching somebody throw a scuba steve in there sometimes it's like if that's all they did it'd yeah. just be like weird <laughs> yeah. you'd be a puppet maybe like the reason like things like sometimes are sad in, in our material life and like the answer to that one of them is the same answer as to why people love to listen to sad songs you know like they get I've something great out of it on a higher level that like if you're playing out the song in that moment you might not realize but it, from a higher level it's there um another thing i wanted to to touch on is mindset in terms of spiritual healing like where where is people's mindset most of the time are they letting it reside in the past the future are they truly present because if you are like if your current mindset in this present moment is super focused on something in your past and like taking away borrowing pain without actually taking any lessening that pain from then and feeling pain now you're not in the present you're in the past and you do the same people do the same thing with the fictions that we create of the future right so i think part of spiritual healing is learning to center yourself more in the present and just by doing that you're so much further away from these things that are causing you pain these things in the future, these things in the past, right? Does that make sense? I think that, yeah, I think that being more present is actually the product of dismantling shame. Mm. And that shame is like, um, in pretty much every addictive cycle that people have, the true addiction. Um, and the less shame you have, the less you dwell. The, like, the more you train your mind not to dwell, the more you soothe your body when it's reacting to past emotions or whatever um the, the the more room you make and the less room shame has to like spread out and do its thing the less important it seems and um like it feeds into itself you try to be more present and like aware of the beautiful things around you and you're more able to do it because there's less shame and more room more beauty <laughs> yeah that you know that just makes me think about like i mean it's kind of like we're you've said it several times and i've alluded to it several times too like how like one of these things can lead into the other but like chicken or egg we were talking about chicken or the egg stuff yeah. yesterday like that's like is somebody like trying to communicate really just like my own journey 
like it's it's i gotta be very mindful of like reminding people that like the order of these things there's a lot of chicken and egg issues right but i think just having glimpses into some of these like experiences that people have had that have felt spiritual healing are are, are useful fertilizer in anyone's path of growth right but i i I'm just reminded to, to, to remind people that this is not a direct roadmap. These are some things that you that we have seen along the way that may be useful in you finding your way to anyone listening. Right. Do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, you and I can keep mm -hmm. talking. We'll do like after the show, but I'm going to end the little bit of a show that we that the, I'm going to put a bookend on focusing on the spiritual healing um, okay. before I take the break here. So if anybody um, is watching this bookended version of this, thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure you come and watch live streams as well if you're available and we can talk and be available to, to have conversations and get deeper into anything. But I wanted to just try kind of as an experiment to, to try like a centered conversation where like I'm actually like writing notes down <laughs> instead of just you did a good job i gotta download self. like that too yeah um, so we were yeah we lined up a lot <laughs> the word transcribe kept coming mm. to my head like mm. to write 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 even though i struggle with it to be a scribe <laughs> <laughs> um it's, it's amazing how we lined up like literally independently came up with the same topic thought right um <laughs> so um but that in mind i'm gonna demonstrating i'm gonna bookend with yes. finally saying thank you very much cedar for being with us today and thank you oh, everyone who's no watching worries. and hopefully our paths will cross again soon not you and me cedar of course ours will but me and whoever's listening to this right now <laughs> um so with that in mind much love to you <laughs>